Danger Dolan. From insane genre mashups to equally insane celebrity vanity projects, we look at 15 trailers that were better than their movies. Number 15. Monuments Men is an interesting example of what to do when you have a film that can't quite decide what it wants to be. The answer, of course, is to just decide for yourself, even if that means the trailer is completely different from the finished product. The trailer pitches a fun Dirty Dozen style action comedy about the real life attempts of Allied troops to save crucial European artifacts like Napoleon's underwear. Not really, but it might as well be because according to the trailer, this is a light fun film about war. Turns out, no, it's not. It's a confused film about war, like they wanted to make a comedy, then went, oh wait, it's war. We can't make too many jokes, so let's have some dark introspection thrown in there so everybody knows that war's bad. Ultimately, it's a muddled film that can't quite decide what it wants to be, but hey, at least the trailer knew what it wanted to be. Number 14. The Secret Life of Walter Mitty Here's another film that struggled to get the tone right. It doesn't know if it wants to be a serious story about a man finding himself or a comedy about a man having crazy fantasies. The trailer is a visually stunning mix of the two. The balance between drama and comedy works great, and it looks to be a captivating movie about Walter Mitty's secret life. That's not what we really got, though. Again, it's another film that can't decide what it's going to be. While not terrible by any means, the film never lives up to the trailer. Number 13. Cowboys and Aliens This one is the first of many comic book films on our list. Cowboys and Aliens sold its rights to be a film before the comic was even published. While there was a lot of debate over how ridiculous the title was initially, it was silenced with the release of the first trailer. We got to see a pretty awesome setup that was tense and exactly what we wanted, Cowboys and Aliens, so everything seemed to be riding along okay. Then the film came out, and while it wasn't awful, the novelty had worn off. While the trailer was memorable and exciting, the film just didn't quite have the same quality and was quickly forgotten. Number 12. The Counselor. This one you may not be too familiar with. It divided critics on release and pretty much flew under the radar in 2013. The trailer, though, is a nice, tight, and exciting experience that promises a story of intense heists and double crosses. The trailer does everything it can to get you to see the film and does a pretty good job. And while technically the film does deliver on its promises, it just never quite feels right. Its biggest criticism is that it feels too much like a book and packs too much into too little, making it a confusing mess on screen. While the trailer is also a confusing mess, it feels right, like we're gonna get answers when we see the film, but it only raised more questions in the end. Not Ridley Scott's worst film, but it's definitely an acquired taste. Number 11. Man of Steel. With a mixture of moody cinematography, Russell Crowe's Sullian voiceover, and uplifting music, the trailer looked interesting and dramatic without being too over the top for a comic book adaptation. Everything was looking pretty good for Zack Snyder's vision. By now, most people know that The Man of Steel is a divisive film. Its depiction of Superman was the main issue, with a lot of the key character traits from the comics being removed or altered. While changes to the core of a character aren't always a bad thing and can be good in some cases, the overall criticism is that it just didn't feel like a Superman film. The trailer gives us some insight on what the film could have been, inspiring and uplifting over how we can better ourselves as people instead of inspiring us to argue online for all eternity about how many people died in those smashed up buildings. Number 10. Sucker Punch. If there's one thing Zack Snyder can do, it's make films with awesome trailers. But in the spirit of fairness, Watchmen isn't on this list. Sucker Punch's trailer was a visual feast that could never be lived up to in a feature film. The trailer is a crazy, insane couple of minutes to watch, leaving you disoriented and wanting more. The movie, though, is also insane and disorienting, but it leaves the viewers asking, what the hell did I just watch? With the convoluted plot to explain the literally insane delusions of the action scenes, the full film doesn't have the same impact as the trailer and everything becomes a dull mess, ultimately making the film feel like a collection of music videos strung together by a murky plot. Number 9. Knowing Speaking of dull messes, Nicolas Cage, what happened to you, man? Knowing was another one of those conspiracy films with a magic mathematical code that predicts disasters. Cage and his family stumble upon the code and hijinks ensue. The trailer is interesting and lays down a lot of the premise quickly. For example, it introduces some mysterious forces that seem to be trying to shut them up about the code. It looks like a good thriller with some disaster porn thrown in. Who doesn't want to see Nicolas Cage trying to figure out some kind of mathematical code to stop Armageddon anyways? Congratulations, you've sold me on your disaster code film. But since you've gotten this far in the video, you don't need a magic code to predict where this film went. To put it simply, it's a mess. It introduces aliens and the end of the world, which starts to really push it into silly places that it didn't need to go. Which would actually be a good thing, but Nicolas Cage doesn't get to go into maximum cage mode, and it just becomes a disappointing experience overall. At least the Wicker Man humorously played to Cage's strengths, even if it wasn't intentional. Number 8. After Earth. Shyamalan Strikes Again. 
This time with the sci-fi film with Will Smith and Junior Smith crashing on an abandoned earth where animals have evolved to be the ultimate killing machines. The trailer for this one might be the worst on the list, but it does strike some hope that this could have been a good film. A decent Shyamalan film in 2013? I don't know about this trailer, but okay, maybe? No. The trailer is a damn liar, and a lot of us fell for its charm. Surprisingly, After Earth had some strong box office returns on the first day of its opening weekend, but all the people who did see it quickly took to social media to get the word out about how terrible the film actually is. After that, the box office took a steep dive on its second day, never to recover, but it speaks volumes about how skilled the trailer editors are. Considering they can take a terrible film and make it look like a potential blockbuster with just a few cuts and edits. Number 7. Superman Returns It could be said that Man of Steel learned how to make such a great trailer by just looking at its predecessor. It could also be said that the trailer was the only good thing to come from Superman Returns. Pushing the angle of being a continuation of the Christopher Reeve films, kinda, sorta. The trailer uses the classic voice of Marlon Brando to hit us right in the nostalgia spot. Even the look and casting of this film fits with the older movies. This made everyone believe at the time that we'd be getting something like Superman 2 or even better. Shame that instead we got the boring cousin of Superman 3 that focuses so much on reminding us of the older films that it doesn't even come close to being an interesting film on its own. To be fair, it does try sometimes, <clears throat> Superman's kid, <clears throat> but it ends up being silly. Not that silly is necessarily bad, I mean, look at the source, the Golden Age comics are hilarious, but they were pioneering something, they were something new to where this is a sort of sequel to a film that came out decades ago. Needless to say, they had plenty of time to get this right and they fumbled it as hard as possible. Still waiting on that great Superman film of the modern age. Maybe if we edit all the trailers together we might be able to Frankenstein a decent Superman film. We could call it the Superman of Steel Returns vs. Batman. Number 6. Cloverfield's preview plays out much like a short film. We get an introduction of the characters, even with a little bit of development. It plays straight as if we're watching a party, everything is normal, then oh no, Statue of Liberty Head. It's an effective scare that immerses the viewer into the situation that the characters are going through, but the whole film just can't retain the same shock value. While Cloverfield is a decent monster movie, it still manages to be a bit of a disappointment. Nothing really comes close to being as impressive or iconic as the sequence we see in the trailer. It's not a bad film, it just can't live up to the monstrously awesome potential of the trailer. Number 5. Only God Forgives So you've got a director who just had a big hit film, but he also just made a dark art film. How do you get people to see it? Pretend it's Drive 2 and BAM! Sold! The trailer for this movie plays out like a dark crime thriller with atmospheric neon lighting and blood-soaked violence, much like the director's last film, Drive. For obvious reasons, this got a lot of fans of the movie Drive pumped up. Sadly for them, any similarities between the films are purely coincidental. The film ended up being nothing like Drive at all, and was never meant to be. While this one is again divisive, you could blame the trailer for setting expectations too high, and the critical backlash stems from that. All that being said, the trailer was mind-blowing and should have won the Oscar for Best Film that year. Number 4. Star Wars Episode 1 The Phantom Menace This is something we can only hope Toyota doesn't happen again with the new trilogy. Episode 1 has an amazing trailer that, like the Force Awakens trailer, was met with praise and squeeze from fans around the world. Of course, we all know how this one turned out. All of those awesome images from the trailer put into context of the whole film turned out to be a horrible letdown that'll continue to haunt the Star Wars franchise. This is a case that serves as a warning, that even though a trailer is awesome, we should always be mindful that it could be the master workings of a Sith. Let's just hope history doesn't repeat itself with Episode 7. Number 3. Spider-Man 3 So much hype for this film. How could it go wrong? The trailer for the third Spider-Man installment looked amazing, with the symbiote making an appearance and the Sandman looking great. The character arc set in the first film coming to a peak and not a trace of Venom to be seen. To say that Venom's the problem with Spider-Man 3 is a little bit unfair. The trailer also doesn't show Emo Parker either, nor does it show all that interesting character stuff that's more rushed and hollow than it was during the first three minutes we watched. Spider-Man 3, as shown in the trailers, would have been the crowning achievement of the Raimi films, but instead we got burned again by some clever advertising for a terrible product. Number 2. Battle Los Angeles? You might not remember this one, which is its main problem, being completely forgettable. Remember when LA was invaded by aliens? I sure don't, because I can't remember how this film played out. I do remember the trailer though, and that was pretty unsettling. Using real-life UFO accounts from around the world, the film comes to the present with hundreds of people being murdered on the beach by alien sky laser explosion things. Then there's a bunch of soldiers versus alien stuff. It's all pretty entertaining, and the real UFO accounts add for a fair amount of tension. But the film itself lacked all this and became a mess of urban extraterrestrial warfare, I think. I don't really remember. Number 1. The Last Airbender The first teaser trailer for this was epic. 
absolutely fantastic in getting the basic premise of the film down without giving out too much, and being equally awesome in pumping people up unfamiliar with the series. Of course, none of the epicness translated into the final film, and Shyamalan, you've done it again. I'm starting to suspect that his whole strategy is not to make good films at all, just good trailers to get people to come in on opening day. But evidently, I'm not the only one catching on to M. Night's tricks, because no one else came in to see this film either. <laughs> what a twist. The trailer really does capture the spirit of the cartoon, and it is just the Avatar blowing out candles with his wind powers, but damn it's impressive. This actually makes what we got so much more painful to sit through, knowing that someone had the right idea somewhere. That's it for this countdown. And have a go